hey what's up guys so one of you guys requested a video to show how to do the initial setup on your crane when you first get it uh, this request was made specifically by AO Felix so uh, this video is for you so let's just get into it so when you open up your crane um, this is probably how it's going to be laid out. I cut an additional uh, slot here to put the uh, to put the remote in. So in my series of Zune crane videos so far, I've pretty much emphasized how important it is to have a table stand um, or mini tripod, uh, and you're about to see why, for, especially for the initial setup. So this is the one that came with my crane. I'm gonna set that aside. Uh, handlebar down there. Um, your positive and your negative on the battery positive side faces up drop both batteries in make sure they're charged uh, out of the package they should be charged and you just connect uh, connect the two pieces here and then table stand connect to the bottom of the crane so you can stand it up on the table now, when you first get the crane, if you're not familiar with what everything else is uh, in the package, it comes with two micro USB cables, um, one which plugs into the battery charger. It doesn't come with the wall adapter and, and you'll see two screws um, identical to this. One is to mount the camera or your quick release plate onto the to the mounting plate of the crane and the other one here with this bracket actually goes to the front of this attaches to the front of the mounting plate uh, in case you're using you know a bigger or a longer lens um, this is specifically to support the lens so when you first put together your crane and you need to stand it up which as you can see this is why the table stand comes very handy and also while shooting if you just want to put it down um, you can just uh, set it down so that's why this is super essential so when it comes to the initial setup of the crane you're going to need to balance it now, some of you might have thought uh, the whole purpose of having a three three axis motorized uh, stabilizer is that you don't have to balance it but uh, not really the case. You do have to balance it just so that it doesn't put too much strain on any of the motors, prevent damaging your unit, and also uh, save battery life so that your motors aren't working as hard. For those of you who have used glide cams uh, and steady cams, it's definitely not at the same degree of balancing uh, those. This one, for the first time, will probably take you. 15 to 20 minutes tops to balance to really learn it and how to and how to balance it. Uh, whereas those SETI cams and fly cams usually can take you hours or even days to, uh, to perfectly balance those those units. Not the case here. A lot easier to balance on a uh, three-axis gimbal. So there's a lot of videos out there that will talk about you know your three-axis points here. They all mention the uh, the three. Uh, terms for these points which is the pitch the yaw the roll um, or whatever order they come in those terms are commonly used for let's say um, airplanes because they demonstrate the three axis point that an airplane can move uh, so it's very it's pretty much the same thing here the pitch is this motor right here which controls the tilting, the forward and backwards tilting of the camera. The roll is this motor right here, which controls the, I guess the side to side uh, tilt of the camera or rolling uh, clockwise and counterclockwise. And then the yaw is down here, which is, which controls like the panning motion or the rotation of the entire camera here. So one of the things to keep in mind before you do mount your camera is make sure the mounting plate is um, correctly facing forward. And what I mean by that is there is an actual front and an actual back of the mounting plate. You can't just uh, mount the camera whichever way it's facing. And in order to tell, and the way to tell, um, aside from looking at the metrics down here where zero is the front and eight is the back, 
you'll know it's the front when you see this thread here and that's where you screw in your lens support bracket so right now it's facing backwards so what we want to do is fix it so that it faces forward now so this is the version 2 as you can see with the uh, sliding um, the sliding mounting plate here the version 1 had three tracks where uh, you would place the camera onto into one of those three tracks and then screw it in with the, uh, the screw. Now, whether you are using the version one or the version two, you can see why it's super convenient to have um, a quick release plate. I would probably say that if you're using the version one crane, quick release plate is necessary or required. Um, because once you unmount your camera, you lose that positioning um, on the plate. So you might have to rebalance your camera again slightly. So once you have a quick release on it, you never have to rebalance it. You'll know that it's always in a balanced position once you mount and unmount your camera. And it's also fast to mount and unmount your camera as well. With the version 2, uh, you don't have to have the quick release plate uh, with the new mounting plate style here you'll never lose your positioning but it still goes side to side here so you still kind of lose the pinpoint positioning of your camera for the balance position um, and it's also a lot faster to uh, mount and unmount your camera with a quick, quick release plate. so definitely the second uh, very essential accessory as I mentioned in my essential accessories video, uh, the table stand and the quick release plate were two of the three, the third being the remote. Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say you have to have the remote. Definitely necessary though, if you do get the dual hand grip. But quick release plate, table stand, remember those two. If you order a crane, make sure you get these two as well. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I slapped on a different lens on my camera so that it throws the balance off so that I can um, go through the balancing process with you guys. So once you throw your camera onto the crane and you let go of it, you can see that it, uh, it'll fall toward, it'll fall in like all sorts of different directions. So that's how you know it's not balanced. So our goal here is to get the camera so that whatever position we manipulate the camera to, it stays there. So if I wanted the camera to, if I, move the camera to this position I let go it shouldn't roll or fall back in any in any direction it should just stay where I left it if I move it here if I move it down there it doesn't matter it has to it should stay whichever position I leave it in so that's how you know it's perfectly balanced so first things first um, there's no real way to start balancing um, it's not like you have to start with you know, the roll or the pitch or the yaw or whichever um, or even the mounting plate here. Um, what I normally do is once I let go of the camera and I see which way it's going. So in this case, you can see that the camera itself is rolling, uh, rolling to the right here or counterclockwise. So what I'm gonna do is start with the roll axis. So now that I roll the roll axis motor, uh, back here, you can see that it's the camera is rolling counterclockwise. So, what we want to do is untighten the screw, and all three motors have these screws to tighten and loosen uh, the positioning. So, in this case, if this is rolling counterclockwise, what I want to do is slide it to the right and test it out so you can see that if the camera is facing forward and perfectly leveled it's okay but that doesn't mean that it's perfectly balanced yet because if I were to move it here this angle you can see that sort of falls through. So if the camera constantly, let's say it's, it's, it's balance is not moving when you're facing it forward, but let's say if you were to tilt it back or forward slightly and it falls back or falls forward, uh, if you're leaving it on an angle and it sort of, um, 
it sort of just falls into that direction. What you'll need to adjust is the pitch, which is right here. So in our case here, if I were, if the camera's perfectly stable, if it's perfectly leveled, it stays. If I were to tilt it a little, let go, most part, looks like it's okay. marginal adjustments. There we go. I think that is good enough. So as you can see, wherever I manipulate the camera, and I let go, it should stay in place. So for the yaw, you're gonna have to pick up the crane and hold it sideways like this. And what you wanna do, line it up and make sure that stays in place. But you can see that it's sort of tilting forward a little. So you can see that when you leave it, if this whole section here is tilting forward, what you need to do is slide this whole bracket backwards. have to make uh, small marginal corrections here and there and adjustments just like a steady cam or glide cam it really shouldn't take you that long to uh, perfectly balance a crane now one thing that I wouldn't recommend you doing when you first get your crane is turning it on and not balancing it without the camera on it you can definitely damage the motors and that's exactly what happened when I had the version 1 so when I first got the version 1 I obviously wanted to turn it on just to make sure that it worked without balancing it or even mounting the camera onto it. As soon as I turned it on, I kind of heard a small little pop sound. And then, um, you know that smell when a, a circuit board pops or shorts and it creates that, that slight burning smell. So that's exactly what happened to my version one, even though after I balanced it and everything, it turned on, but the motors didn't work. And I've heard from others and the instructions itself also says do not turn it on without the camera mounted on it and without balancing it first. So make sure uh, you do that. And so now that we have the crane pretty balanced, go ahead and uh, turn it on. So to turn it on, you'll see the power button right here. Just press it three times and then hold. And then once that light turns solid yellow, and it turns on. So you have the zoom switch here, um, and what it does is it allows you to uh, actually zoom with the camera, uh, but what you'll need is, you'll need the micro USB uh, modular cable specific to your camera. So if you have a Sony, if you have a Panasonic, Canon, whatever it might be, uh, Zhiyun actually carries different cables for whatever make your camera is and where you plug it in is You'll notice here. There's a micro USB slot there and a micro USB slot on the side of the handle here and uh, You plug it in and you can control your camera zoom and you can take pictures And you can also control when to uh, hit the record button and stop recording as well. I really only use two modes, whether it be uh, the default, which you can see that the yaw motion, so the panning, is 
locked, uh, but you'll notice a slight lag in it. So just be mindful of that when you are doing your pan. Can't pan left and right. You can see that nothing happens, but I can tilt my camera on the pitch. To unlock it so that uh, all three axes are engaged, you just press the mode button once. And then there you go. Tapping the mode button three times will bring it into like a selfie mode. And then tapping it three times again will bring it back and make it face uh, forward again. If you want to get the low, low to the ground shot, so um, sort of have the camera flying right above the ground, what you'll need to do is while you're holding it, you can see. While you're holding it, you're gonna need to quickly flip it upside down. There you go, in one quick motion. Otherwise, the motors are just gonna go a little bit weird and it's, it, it, it sort of looks like it's getting confused what you're trying to do. Um, so in one quick motion, you just flip it upside down and then you can uh, sort of fly it right above the ground, get the low shots. Make sure that when you are gonna do that flip, you don't flip it this way where the pitch motor is because it can get caught. You can do some damage, so make sure you always go the opposite away from the pitch motor. That's it for today, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, um, hit the logo to subscribe. Thumbs up button if you thought this video was pretty helpful. And uh, drop a comment down in the comments below. Let me know. Um, what you guys think if you have any questions um, if There's any videos that you want me to shoot to uh, sort of teach you guys or walk you through anything else Just let me know down below Links to everything is going to be down in the, in the description So um, if you are interested in buying the crane or any of the accessories Everything that I mentioned is going to be down there as well So thanks again guys and I'll catch you guys in the next one